Howdy, and welcome to the White Hat Law Show with Warren Nord, where we cover a mix of current events, politics, and the law. Take it away, Warren. Hi, I'm Warren Nord. We missed the inaugural episode of White Hat Law. Today we're going to be talking about property taxes with my friend Ron Wright. Ron is the Tarrant County Tax Assessor Collector. I said that right, right? You did. I did. Thank you. And just so everybody knows, Ron has been preaching the gospel on property taxes since his days on city council when he helped toe the line a little bit. Ron, you've done a lot of work in the last few years to try to raise awareness of what tax rates are and what taxes are. What have people not gotten and what have people got? Well, we're having to, to turn around uh, some myths that have been around literally for decades. Uh, and it's led to a lot of misconceptions and misunderstandings, some of them honest, some of them not so honest, with regard to property taxes, why they go up, and who's responsible. Um, most people have this notion that uh, if value goes up, then their taxes automatically go up. And there's nothing true about that. That's a myth. So we've been trying to educate the public and elected officials because state law is very clear that responsibility for property taxes lies with the elected body of the taxing units. But I hear city council people and county commissioners and all sorts of people say, I didn't raise your taxes, I kept it the same. Sometimes they will say that, which is a big lie. Other times they'll use, just, um, they'll use the truth to mislead people, which is just, just as dishonest as a lie. They'll say things like, well, we didn't raise the rate, and we don't have anything to do with your value. So if your value went up, that's because of the appraisal district. Both of those statements are true in and of themselves, but they're used to mislead the taxpayer into believing, A, we didn't raise your taxes, somebody else did, and B, it was probably that mean old appraisal district down there. Well, appraisal districts have no taxing authority. Only elected uh, bodies can raise taxes uh, for their taxing units. That's clear, it's in the law, and, uh, uh, but there's a lot of misunderstanding about that among the public and elected officials. Well, what is TAD? And are you in charge of TAD? Who's in charge no. of TAD? Uh, the Tarrant Appraisal District is the, uh, every county has a central appraisal district that is charged with setting the value for all property uh, granting any exemptions and providing a tax role to an appraisal role rather to all the taxing units the school district the cities county and to my office so I take that and then the uh, taxing units will give me their tax rates and I will apply that to these values and send out tax statements uh, so the appraisal district is uh, it's not elected uh, it's run by a, a board that is appointed by the taxing units. Now, like 27 or something, right? No, there's there's actually only six on the board, including me, and I'm ex officio. I don't vote. Uh, so there's a five-member board plus the tax assessor collector. The five members are appointed by the taxing units, and they hire and fire the, the chief appraiser who runs the appraisal district. But how does, okay, so Arlington... Uh, in the school district, how do they have, have an input into who's on who the board is? Well, uh, it's it's based on the amount of levy the taxing unit has. Uh, Arlington ISD and City of Arlington will usually join up and appoint one person. Um, the Northeast cities and school districts will combine to appoint one person. The City of Fort Worth and Fort Worth ISD, they're the, the gorillas. And they'll usually have at least two. Um, the county can vote for one, or they can vote for several, and um, as well as you know TCC, the county college. Um, everybody gets to vote on who's going to sit on that board. So all the elected officials get together and elect people or, or appoint people to these boards. And that's happening board. right now. That's happening right now. Uh, for example. Last week, Tarrant County commissioners uh, nominated, I believe it was five people, four people. Uh, all of the other taxing units are doing the same thing. Those nominations will be combined and a ballot made up, and that ballot will go to all the taxing units. Uh, 
and then their their elected bodies will then vote who to send to the appraisal district board. Now, is our appraisal district, you know, we have Dallas over just across the way, or how does, how, is there a performance metric that you can use to compare uh, appraisal districts? I mean, I guess every county has an appraisal district. Right, right. and um, the, the real uh, measure of an appraisal district is conducted every year by the controller's office, state controller's office. And uh, that's part of school finance. They're required to audit all of the appraisal districts and make sure that they're um, appraising property uh, the way it should be appraised. Um, for example, three years ago, the Tarrant County Appraisal District was audited and found to be deficient, that they had undervalued property in Tarrant County. And so the state then had to come up with more money for the school districts to make up that difference. And they had two years to appraise the property um, correctly and bring values up to where they should be based on the market. Wow. Okay. So, uh, what does a city do, or what does a what does a what does the electorate do if they think the taxes are rising too high? Is there what's the rollback procedure, or is there a rollback? Procedure? Well, there is. There's um, a very important thing in the law. Every July, by July 25th, sometimes they slip a little, the appraisal districts have to furnish their certified values, a certified role that has all the names, addresses, values, and exemptions. They're certified by the chief appraiser. Then in August, and it's supposed to happen around August 7, all the taxing units have to publish what's called truth and taxation which will be the effective rate and the rollback rate. And that's on my, on, on the thing I get in the mail, it's on there, right? It's on there. And, <laughs> but it's published in, all, in the newspaper every year. Um, and it'll list both of those rates. The effective rate is, is vital because that's the benchmark. That's the tax rate that would be required to uh, generate the same amount of revenue as the year before on the same property taxed the year before. So it doesn't include new property or new construction. Um, and So I think that's an important point. So you're saying that even if we kept the effective rate, that doesn't mean that the amount of money the taxing agency is going to get stays the same. Oh, not at all. Especially in our area, because we're in a growth area. Uh, we're in, a, in a, an area with a growing economy growing population, so values are, are going up. And, and you have new, uh, new construction and new properties coming online every year in the DFW area. Now, not all our areas are like that, but Texas is blessed. So the, uh, the effective rate is the benchmark. It's the official baseline. And if, if the taxing unit, if the governing body adopts a tax rate that's greater than the effective rate, then they're raising taxes for their taxing unit. The rollback rate is the rate in the law that would allow um, the citizens of a taxing unit to have a rollback election. Right now in Texas, it's eight percent. And if we win that, it does. It just limits it to eight well, percent, or it goes back. It is. It is mandatory on school districts. If if they go up to that eight percent, go beyond eight percent, it's an automatic rollback election. For cities and counties, they have to do a petition of voters. Um, generally, in our area, it's going to be 7% because of the amount of levy we're talking about. And they have to present that. They have 90 days after the tax rate is adopted to do this petition and submit it. And if, if they have qualified voters on that, on that petition, it's all done correctly, then that unit has to hold uh, an election where people can vote to either ratify it or reject the tax rate that was adopted. And how often does that actually happen? Doesn't happen very often. Um, we've had, I'll tell you that this year we had two taxing units um, that were over the rollback, but neither had a petition for an election. Well, thank you, Ron. Uh, we're gonna be joined in the next segment by Senator Connie Burton, so stay tuned. Hang on, y'all. More with Warren when we get back. Welcome back. Uh, along with Ron, we now have the fabulous Senator Connie Burton, who's elected in 2014 to represent the 
the northeast and curving around yes. the south side of Tarrant mm -hmm. County and doing a great job Thank you. Um, and been working on this tax property issue. Yes. I wanted to start off and then and get our, our senatorial view on things. Okay. You mentioned earlier there was a rollback elections. Right. Are these successful or generally? or Tell us any examples recently. So a few years ago, the city of Bedford had a rollback election. They're called TREs, tax ratification elections. And the citizens of Bedford did the petition, got it on the ballot, had the election, and they, they voted against the tax rate that had been adopted. When that happens, the taxing unit has to adopt either the effective rate or the previous year's rate, whichever is lowest. Sweet. Plus, yeah. <laughs> they have to then pay the tax office additional money to cover the cost of another mailing of tax statements that go out. So it's very expensive uh, for the taxing unit if it fails. So they tend uh, to stay below 8% or 7%. They right. right up to it and stay, stay below it. Um, but you want to look at, at that truth in taxation every August very, very carefully because that's going, to, that's going to give you a good indication of what they're planning to do. And again, if they adopt a rate or if they propose a rate that's greater than the effective rate, then they're proposing a tax, tax increase. Uh, that's the first thing a taxpayer can look at is what that effective rate is. The next thing is their budget. Are they raising, are they increasing spending? Because all taxing units are required by law to have a balanced budget. So if they increase spending, right. they have to increase revenue. Right. So, you know, uh, in, it's a fundamental law of government. Uh, spending drives taxes. Budgets drive tax rates. Yep. But I think I went to some hearings at UTA where you and some other senators were talking, and I heard city council person after yep. committee judge, yeah, county judge tell you that they were not raising taxes. Right. Uh, yeah, you hear that over and over. I will tell you, um, just to start off, that what we hear most in our office is property is about property taxes and how people are being priced out of their homes. Now, I continually get told by political subdivisions that they never hear about this. And perhaps they don't. And maybe because you know, it is all kind of rather confusing. And one of the things we need to do is make it a simpler system so people know who to um, talk to um, to get this taken care of. But um, so, you know, we get pushback for political subdivisions. Um, right. I use that term because it's for cities, counties, everybody, right? right? All of us, all of us in the legislature are always hearing about high property taxes. Um, what we were trying to do down in the legislature was pass legislation um, that didn't even, all it did was slow the rate of growth. But it really didn't even do that, right? I mean, well, it, as long as the citizens would, would approve it, you could still raise as much as you wanted. Well, true. What right. I'm trying to say is it wasn't this huge reform um, where uh, political subdivisions were just losing hand oh, over right, fist right. revenue, right? We were just giving, what we wanted to do was give citizens the opportunity to vote, an automatic um, uh, an automatic vote. Because as um, our tax assessor explained already, um, people have to get petitions signed. So the first they have to yeah. hear, oh, they're going to raise or the, the rate. Did I use the correct word there? <laughs> yes. And then they have to find that out. And then they have to go out and get all these uh, right. signatures. And then they can um, possibly get an, an election on this. All we're saying is do what currently schools already have to do. We're just making it the same and saying, okay, if you go above this, it's going to be an automatic election. So people don't have to go through this petition process. Right. Um, and then they can vote on it. It's pretty simple. Well, I've always had the problem with you. If, if you if you think that what you're spending money on is right, if you think that this tax increase is fine, then exactly. you put it before the. How often exactly. do we actually ever turn down a tax rate? You know, we we just had in our own ISD yeah. not too long ago six hundred million dollars pass with flying colors. Right. We right. we give a half billion dollars to various sports entities pass with flying colors. We don't actually roll the city back or push back that often. We have. Uh, Public hearing after public hearing at city council, you know, you'll have three people show up because everybody else has real lives. They have real lives and they don't right. come to these things. Right, right. And so. And again, I think there's yeah. a lot of, you know, people don't, it, because the way it's set up, and I get why it is, but many, many people come to us, their house reps and their uh, senators, when it's actually, you know, their local 
um, elected officials that they need to speak to about it. But but because we do hear about it so much, we're right. trying to do something about it, and we have the right to. The state absolutely and utterly has a right to, and that's where I get frustrated with the political subdivisions. Act like we don't have the right to do that. We absolutely do. Well, I, I you know. Those of us in this room, you know, tend to want to be local control. And then we, some of the more liberal side of the House says, well, you say you're in favor of local control, but then you want to put these controls on us from the state. And so. And that is because they're overreaching. Right. right? Um, um, and, and we have given political subdivisions all the powers that they have. We can certainly pull back on those powers right. when they're beginning to overreach. And when they're taxing people out of their homes, absolutely we can do something about it. I am so aggravated. We hear this all the time, and I know you have as well. Um, people cannot own their homes because of the property tax that we have system that we have. You could be, uh, you could have paid off your home. Um, you could be retired and your, um, property taxes increase year after year after year. And, um, how are you going to pay those exorbitant taxes? Well, at the end of the day, if you're retired, at the end of the day, sometimes you just sell your home because you can't afford it anymore. That's antithetical to our system. Um, private property rights, owning your own property is what makes America great. And we have this system and, I, and it just it seems um, not fair to the homeowner. Well, first of all, we want to recognize that antithetical is the word of the day. <laughs> like that. Uh, without a doubt. I use it a lot because <laughs> there's many things well, that are that. We only got a couple minutes, but I wanted, I wanted to make sure... That so you guys attempted to do what, right. and where is it going to? Right. So we attempted to, to have this time. automatic rollback election. In other words, they didn't. Have, so citizens didn't have to do all this work of getting this petition, so they can get a, an election um, going. So it would just be an, a rollback. We passed it instantaneously out of the Senate. Um, fantastic piece of legislation during the regular session. Um, I will tell you from my perspective, uh, it was very, very, very slow rolled uh, in the house there's um not all we have fabulous house members we do fabulous house members from tarrant county absolutely that were fighting for us very hard um there are many in different leadership roles in the house um that didn't want it and they slow rolled it and then you're being very generous and politically I, correct yeah. Yeah. yes Let, <laughs> let's go ahead and say it. the speaker of the house <laughs> yeah we'll let we'll let the non-legislative person we'll let the local guy say ron who, who, who what, what did you see that failed in that well, process what, what i saw was a complete failure of leadership and i i happen to believe that that uh, it was never going to pass in the house because the speaker of the house didn't want it what's his name again <laughs> Strauss. Strauss. What yeah. else, I guess, on each end. Right. <laughs> but to speak to what she was talking about and the local control component, when taxpayers are told year after year after year after year by their local governments that we didn't raise your taxes, and they look to the appraisal district, well, the appraisal district didn't raise them because they have no taxing authority. That's right. Well, then this public perception grows that we have a tax system in Texas in which nobody's accountable. That's right. But we know that's not true. That's so, right. what, so what are they going to do? They're going to call the legislature. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. And we're going to try to help. And well, we did try. I, well, I want to thank uh, Senator Burton and Tax Assessor Collector Ron Wright for being with us. And we'll be back in just a minute with Chad Landy. Oh, hang on to your hat, folks. More with Warren Nord when we get back. Welcome back. Uh, we've let uh, our two guests go, and now we've got Chad Lampe out of Norad Law. It's our law firm, and we handle these kinds of things, property tax matters from time to time. So, Chad, yes, I get sir. I get this thing in the mail that says I'm going to owe money. What do I do? Well, after you stop freaking out and your wife freaks out, wondering how you're going to pay bills. Um, you do have a deadline to file your protest um, with the county. Uh, we can do that online. Um, you file your protest, you're going to get a hearing date, you go down there, and there's a few options. You can hire an attorney, you can do it yourself, you can get a property tax consultant uh, to go down and argue it for you to say why, you know, I think that this is over appraised. Um, you know, folks have gone and gotten foundation guy come in, give an invoice, hey, this is, I have problems with my walls, I've got problems with my foundation, I had X, Y, Z, and they come in, plead their case, and, and they get it reduced sometimes. Now, is that an all-day thing, or is that a... I believe it's just a short, you know, it's just a short little hearing. You know, you get a slot, you show up, um, you plead your case, uh, and you're out the door. You'll get, a, you'll get a ruling, and you're going to get a notice in the mail, and that notice in the mail is if you lose, and, and that's when you decide, and that's really where the attorneys come into it. Um, 
and you decide you want to file a lawsuit, you have 60 days from the day you receive that notice in the mail. So you'll get it via certified mail, uh, and then that starts your clock. Um, then you got to make the decision, okay, do I want to turn this into a lawsuit in district court? Um, there's the there's gonna be cost involved in that. There's gonna be your filing fee and your service fee, which is gonna be about 300 bucks. Uh, and then of course there's paying your attorney. Um, but now if you're if you're successful in this suit, the the statutes do allow for recovery of attorney's fees. They are capped, so you can't go in there and, and just go hog wild. Um, but that is a you know if if you're in a small house, uh, a normal subdivision, you know I don't know if it's always gonna be the best decision for you to file a lawsuit. But however, if you have commercial property or if you have you know, um, uh, a larger piece of residential property, uh, and it's going to be a substantial tax savings over the year. If you're going to look prospectively, it might be make make it may make the uh, you know, good decision to file a lawsuit. Now you handle these kind of lawsuits, right? I do. Um, now it's going to vary on when you file it from county to county, um, as far as the timelines involved. Um, some of the counties, you know, you can file a case and it can take a couple of years. And some of them, um, it's gonna you'll get done. And so let's uh, say I've got let's say I've got a commercial piece of property, and I think that I've been uh, over. It, it's it says my value is too much. Do I have to pay the tax in the meantime, or do what do I have to that's do? That's an excellent question. Um, the in order to successfully have your appeal, you need you need to pay the amount in full, uh, and then at the end of the day, if everything gets lowered, you get a refund, or you need to pay the undisputed amount of taxes. What you can't do is say it's my money. No, I'm going to file a lawsuit. Because then you're going to get poured out in court uh, and still owe taxes and penalties. Poured out means that you lose? You lose, you go home nothing, and thank you for the $300 uh, to the county for the filing uh, and your time and you know your attorney's fees that you're going to pay. So you handle these things from time to time. Um, what what is? Do they treat you as though you are uh, the enemy, or, or how does the county treat you? Well, yeah, I, I think that's going to vary, of course, from, from county to county. I think, you know, generally these, this doesn't involve a, no one's been killed, okay? So no one's, this is, this, I think this is a very, you know, on a professional basis, at least my experience with the other attorneys on the, on the sides working for the counties, they're all very professional, very courteous. Um, it's just, it's more of a business matter that this, this needs to be resolved. And, and I usually approach it with, hey, that's the best way to do this. This is, you know, Thank God no one's been hurt. Um, so the kind of lawsuit, it's not going to turn into a, you know, what we call a knife fight. Now, there are some important considerations when you're going into this is you need to prove your case. Um, and you going in and saying, hey, my rate, my money, my, everything went up. You know, that may not get you that far. So what's going to need to happen is you're going to have to have an expert. Um, on the front end, it's always best before you file a lawsuit to know who your expert's going to be instead of filing a lawsuit. And where well, there's deadlines that start when you file a lawsuit, uh, and and it's, that's not the time to go, hey, let me find my expert, because you may end up one with one you don't like. Um, so you can get a property tax consultant or appraiser um, to say, hey, this is why I think my property's been unequally um, valued, uh, and go war on that. And that's, the, that's the, I guess, the, the, the issue, is it unequally valued? If they, as long as the county is treating everybody the same way, or as long as the, the, the appraisal district is treating everybody the same way, that's the key? Yes and yeah no. There, there's three different. There's kind of three different methods of. Uh, well, I guess I don't need unequal appraisal. There's three different theories of, of how to um, come by a determination. Um, the the third one being the most used, and the first two being the the most novel. Um, as in, if you're going to go that route, there's no case law on it yet because it's ex typically exorbitantly expensive to figure out how to litigate that, unless you have a novel theory that you're willing to go and fight to the Supreme Court, which. It'd be in the which, future. Which we do from time to time. Which we do from time to time. <laughs> um, um, but, but that's not the kind of thing you do for a house, right? It's, well, it could be for residential property. You know, again, if you're willing to pay the freight, that's the big thing is how, you know, some people are willing to fight this on principle. And, you know, people often come to our office and say, what's the principle of the matter? I want to fight this. I say, great. Um, when I send you that invoice and we're in 20 grand into it, what's your principle still at? You know, is, right. is it still worth it to you? Yeah, about, about that third five thousand dollar check, um, the principal starts getting really heavy. Right, yeah. and you know, and and uh, I guess in the property tax cases, at least you know today, they're not. It's not. I think you can. You're not going to burn through as much attorney's fees, at least in my experience, as you will in a at other kind of litigation. Because um, you know, it's the discovery. I think you know what you're looking for is a little more limited. If you have a focused, you know. You could spend a lot of money on appraisals. Now, if you could throw a lot of money into that, but as far as, as far as your attorney's fees, um, I think they are going to be a, typically less than a typical commercial, well, I think much lower than a typical commercial litigation case, or even a, maybe a small business assuming for breach of contract, which before you know it, you're 40 grand into a fight, 
and you're not even at trial. Okay, so the, so the message is it's not a forty thousand dollar lawsuit. I don't think, no. I mean, I think I think they can, I yeah. think they can be, but I think the majority of them, at least in my my experience, you know, it's not that kind of that kind of dollar. And your attorney's fees are going to be capped on recovery. So you know, you may be able to pay your attorney more than that, depending on what his hourly rate is. Um, but you know, you're going to be limited by the statute on what you actually recover. Okay. Well, this last year, I went online and I just did it online for our house, um, and you can just offer an amount of money. Uh, and if they accept it, then you're done. And uh, that was, that was kind of nice. And so I encourage a lot of people to do that. Um, but or it's, you can do what I did and hire a property, property tax consultant, you know, pay him a, a fee and he'll go and file it for you. Um, I think the, the appraisal district, at least in Tarrant County, is so backed up right now that, I mean, it, my, 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 my house case still hasn't been heard. So I'm, so I'm still waiting to see if it's going to get reduced. Well, it's... Essentially, we all we all have the same deal. So it, it, I guess there 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 have been shows that said everybody should go protest. But what would happen then? I think it would be great. I think <laughs> exactly. everyone should just flood everything and just sue the hell out of everybody. I think that's the perfect way to handle all of this problem. Um, and, you know, and I say that tongue in cheek. Um, just a little. Just a little. But uh, there's <laughs> part of me that says no. You know, if it's this, the, you know, the kind of if everyone requests a jury trial on speeding tickets, you're going to have a lot. You know, more reasonable speeding laws. Yeah, yeah. yeah. More reasonable yeah. speeding laws. Well, I, I appreciate this, Chad. Uh, is there anything else that, that people should know that easy mistakes are going to make that, that you should tell them? Your biggest thing is not sitting once that letter comes in, is to act uh, and not put it in the pile on the kitchen counter with all the other stuff with your you know your medical bills and your um, Rocky Mountain Health Foundation magazine. You know, act on it. Um, file your protest. If you do get that letter, if you do have your hearing with front appraisal board and they deny it, you know, realize that you only have 60 days from the day you, the day you file that letter to file your lawsuit. And know, to, know that you can't just hold on to your money. you gotta, you got to pay something. Um, you know, there may be an argument whether you paid enough, um, but if you pay the full amount of the taxes due, then at least you're not going to get knocked out for lack of jurisdiction court. And come see Chad Lampy at Nord Law, and he'll help you with that, right? We can, we can help you with that. So, well, thank you for tuning in and, and watching our first episode. Uh, thanks to Chad for coming in and, and uh, giving, giving, sharing his experience with us. If you have a commercial uh, tax need or, or it, the tax rate that you've been hit with and the valuation, as we've heard, adds up to a big tax hike, uh, then come visit us and we'll sit, maybe, maybe we can help. So thanks until next time. Well, that's a wrap, folks. And we want to thank you for listening to the White Hat Law Show here with Warren Norris. To find out more about Warren, check him out at nordlaw.com. See you next time.